All right, so I'm sharing my screen here, and I'm going to basically show you first that I'm working off of an external SSD. Uh, that's a solid state drive. You should know what that is if you're video editing, but it's a it's different than the physical hard drive that does the whirring and the spinning. This is a small hard drive that's easy to work with. So you can either work off directly off of your laptop or desktop, or I recommend working off an external drive, especially when I'm working for clients. I like to keep everything nice and separate. I've got my assets here. These are all of my files. You can see I've got one angle, I've got the other angle, and then I've got my center angle. The GoPros usually separate files into 20 minute files and we'll show you, I'll show you how to sync those. And then we've got our audio file right here extracted from the GarageBand file that they send me. And then I've got these two files here. I've got the Premiere file and then I've got the thumbnail for the podcast. Uh, this is not this one. This is from the previous podcast because I'm using this as a template, carrying it over and, you know, using it for the next one. So you'll see how I transition from one to the next. And when you start to create your podcasts, you can begin to, you know, let the file sit there, copy and paste it, change out all the assets and all that. So essentially that's what we're going to be doing here. So I've already moved the previous assets from the previous podcast onto the archive hard drive. So I'm going to offline all of these because I'm going to be removing these files anyway. So that's the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to go into my files and I'm going to remove all of the previous assets that are no longer relevant. So I'm just going to delete these. Yes. And then I'm going to delete these, which are also part of the previous assets. And once we get to the end, you'll see exactly what I mean by removing these, because th these are the files we're going to end up with by the end of this. So I'm going to remove the long clips and all of the social clips as well. And what I like to have, I'll remove the multicam because we're going to create a new multicam sequence. And then I need to go and, rec and um, remove... Yes, we'll move, remove this one as well, and then remove the WAV file. Great. So I'm going to close this, and what we have essentially are these four files are going to be what we're working with. This is the audio file, which already has my intro and outro sort of set up here. I have it uh, set up to do fading, you know, to fade down to when the music starts uh, with keyframes and then fade up to when the music starts with keyframes as well and when the music ends uh, for the end of the podcast. So I'm going to set up my file in the audio file and then you, let me just open these up to show you. We've got the full episode which has things like quote graphics that are going to show up on screen. Um, we've got end card material and uh, end card for YouTube and then we've got like our intro and graphics and all this stuff. Don't worry, I'm going through this quickly because it's not something you need to know yet. This is just stuff that's going to be a part of uh, what we'll be going through as we go along. And then long clips are kind of the same thing. I have a template set up with what my intro is going to be. Uh, I've got my uh, lower third here, and then I've got my upper left sort of badge for the podcast. And then same thing with the outro. So what you're going to need to do at points is, you know, go through the process of figuring out your look, your style, and adding all of these elements together essentially to make this video podcast. And it took a while to come with all the come up with all these things. And this is the template for the social clips, which I have a banner here at the bottom. This is going to change as I get to that part. Um, but this is the template that I use for social clips as well. And I'll show you all of the like export um, details and all that fun stuff. And so we're going to take this through to synchronization and getting all of our files in here. So let's get, let's go into our assets folder. I'm going to copy everything and bring it over. So an important thing to know is that yes, Premiere does automatically sync files or you can. But there's a couple stipulations. There's something important that you need to know. Um, this is while all of this reads in here. I'm going to press the tilde key, which is the the key next to the number one on your keyboard, and that will help that to be full screen. Like if you select, you know, the different elements on the screen, it'll make it full screen. And this is I'm on a laptop, so this is the way I have it set up. I like having my 
monitor up top, I like having all of my asset elements on the left side here that I'll need to cycle through, and then my timeline here on the right, kind of keeping it visually clean for me to be able to think about one thing at a time. So when we're synchronizing, this is our audio file, and then we're going to have essentially every every video and audio track needs to be on its own separate track for synchronization to work. So if I were to grab all of this now, right click and select synchronize, you see it's grayed out. What it needs is for all of these files to be on separate tracks and for all of these, at least the audio files on the left to be selected as to which ones you want to sync together. Uh, I'm not actually positive. Let me try this real quick while we're doing this. It might just be that the audio tracks need to be on separate tracks. The video tracks might be able to stay the same. Let's try it, shall we, while we're here? It's kind of my style is experimenting. So yeah, it's still grayed out. So what we want to do is separate the video tracks as well. And everything has been imported. You can see there was a progress bar in the bottom right. It shows that everything's imported. And you can see all of the waveforms. So that's how you know everything is imported. So let's select everything by clicking and dragging and then we're going to right click and now you see synchronize is available so we're going to synchronize audio track channel one you can select other tracks if it shows up and you can also just click a you know start point and end point but usually i will sync it to audio so click ok and uh, this is a pretty fast macbook so should this should just take a moment and you'll see all of the files essentially sync together which Saves a ton of time, and I didn't know this was a thing for a long time. So hopefully this is a, a first aha for you to be like, oh crap, I didn't realize that that was a thing. That's fantastic. All right, you see how everything is brought together. I'm going to drag it all closer to the center. And I, I like to edit everything away from my main staging here on the left, and then I'll, I'll put it all together towards the end. So for the sake of neatness, I'm going to put all this back together. I'm clicking and pressing the shift key as I drag down so it doesn't get uh, doesn't get synced out of position. So I'll click, shift, drag down, let go. Click, shift, drag up, let go. Click, shift, drag up. Click, shift, gra drag up. And yes, this is a little monotonous, but it's not as monotonous as it used to be <laughs> when you couldn't sync everything together. So I'm going to put this up, and eventually we're going to get rid of these audio tracks anyway, because I won't need them. Uh, so my next step here is that I'm going to take actually these GoPro files. And again, this is unique to my situation. You might not have GoPro files to work with, but we're going to cover it anyway, because this is my process, and, and uh, you can extract what you need from my process. What I like to do is create five camera angles. So let me show you here. We've got our wide shot. I can turn this off. We've got Joel, this is the one of the hosts, and then we've got Antonia, the other host. And uh, see that they have fairly wide angles here. So I'm going to take, if I click Option, uh, I believe Alt on the PC, Alt and drag, and I'll do the same thing with Shift to make sure it stays in place. And then I can duplicate that file that way, that uh, part of the timeline. And so what I'm going to go to on the left side here is I'm going to go into effects. No, it's not effects. It's effects controls, right? Effects controls. And I'm going to create another angle, essentially. So about 130, maybe 140. Let's do... And then we're going to zoom in and create another angle here for us to use. I'm going to get her basically... I want her eyes to be about... You know, if you look at the rule of thirds, which is one, two, three, and then you've got this like cross section rule of thirds vertically and diagonally, I'm kind of going for that sort of look. But I also have this on air sign that I don't get it, want to get cut off completely. So looking for her, her eye line to be about there, and you can see now if I were to cut back and forth, I've got kind of a zoom in cut that I can use when I start to do multi cam cutting. And so I'm going to bring that one back on. Now we have Joel. I'm going to do the same thing. Option or Alt, move up, and make sure I hit Shift so it doesn't fall out of place. And I'm going to do the same thing, about 140. And then I'm going to drag it over. 
and get kind of a one-third sort of look here. Of course, you're going to be limited to by, by what angles you have or you've shot at or your clients have shot at, um, but certainly make the best that you can. And if you can get a couple different angles to create some visual variety, then that's great. For me, I, I don't want to do too many angles because I don't want it to be overwhelming. Now, this GoPro shot, GoPro has a bit of a darker color profile, and I'm not trying to do full-on color grading right now. Now it's just about making sure that everything is synced together in terms of a look. And right now this is way too dark compared to these other ones. So I'm sort of zooming in first and getting the angle that I want. I think I can zoom out just a little more, create some room. I don't want to be too cramped. And yeah, that's a good spot right there. And allow that to, to be that. Okay, uh, what I can do is click on motion, hit Command C or Control C, and I can grab the other uh, GoPro files and hit Command V, and that will create the same zoomed in and positioning uh, motion sort of parameters for all of those files. And uh, let's see, the last thing I want to do too is make color adjustment. So if I click Lumetri color, nowadays they have this like sort of auto uh, auto AI enhancer kind of situation. I'm going to let that do its magic, but I know I also want to bump this up, bump up the exposure quite a bit. Now I'm not going to get exact because it's just a different camera. It's a different color, but I'll probably bump up the highlights a little bit too. I will cool it down a tiny bit. And then I'm going to bring up some of the shadow and bring up some of the black. But I don't want it to be too faded. And I don't want it to be too bright either because it'll blow out when I go to render. So I'd say that's pretty okay. It's still kind of very orange. So I'm going to try to blue it a little bit. There's more detail you can get into with... Um, with, with the HSL secondary and stuff like that, but for the sake of time, because I have to do so many of these, I'm gonna not necessarily get into those details. But if you wanna look up how to use the HL sec HSL secondary to do better frame matching, you certainly can. And I know Premiere has some stuff related to frame matching, but that's just not something I use. So uh, again, certainly you can do a little research if that's something you need a little more help with. So I'm gonna grab let me go back in here. On the left side, back in the effects controls, we've got Lumetri Color. I'm going to select that, do Command C or Control C, and select all the rest, and hit Control V. You'll see that the FX turned green, and now we have the same color grading throughout. Now, the thing is with this podcast is that we export, the color grading is black and white. So as long as the brightness is there and the contrast is there it's going to look great and i'll show you the end result when we get close to that element so now uh now that i have all of my clips in place the way that i want them to be i'm going to select everything and right click and go to nest and i'm going to essentially change the file name i have to go back and change the other file names too i'll show you that in a second too PH Podcast episode 487, not 86, ENFP careers, and then underscore multicam. I always use multi uh, underscores. I just, I used to work in data management, so underscores just work better with programming than, uh, than spaces. So if you're working with Dropbox and stuff like that, sometimes you might run into issues. So you can see how I have... I needed to change these on the left side to the different, uh, the, the new file names. So I'm going to go back and do this now. You can certainly make a list and do an order of operations with all these things. I just kind of remember what I need to do because things are dependent on each other <laughs> to make sure everything goes really well. Great. Uh, okay. We've got an extra underscore here, so I'm going to fix that real quick while we do this and great 
So I'm going to do a quick save. Save early and save often. Don't forget. <laughs> That's very important. And the next next thing we're going to do to get this multicam setup going is to right click, go to multicam, and then enable. Now there's this button here called toggle multicam view. You can select that. If that button is not there, you can select the button editor on the on the right, this plus icon, and it should be next to this multicam record on off toggle. You can, you know, drag this over and then bring it into the toolbar and click OK. And that will enable the window. Now, if you don't see this, if for some reason it's still not showing you multiple views, you may have to select V1 or um, select or deselect V1 uh, on the timeline here. Uh, that might be a possibility of why that's not working. Otherwise, you know, you should be golden here. Now, there are two ways that you can change the camera angles. You can go into your multicam sequence, which is now just basically the layers that we had before, and you can change the order of these. Now, this is a little bit more tricky because you might pull things out of sync, so I wouldn't necessarily recommend you do that to reorder them manually, but you can see this it's it's in order one two three four five so if i go back into the multicam you'll see that it's bottom to top right one two three four five and this fifth angle is the wide angle so another way that you can change the order of the cameras is going into this wrench on the right here and go down to edit cameras and you'll see one two three four five and it's in that order, one, two, three, four, five. So if I wanted to move this wide shot to number one, I click OK. Now that moves that into that different order, right? So that's that's important to know. I don't like that as the first shot, so I'm going to move this back to the bottom because that's just what I'm used to with this project. All right. And uh, I think that's a good place to wrap up this section what basically what we're going to do next is I'm going to show you how to start to select different angles and we're going to run through this entire episode make some edits as we go to cut out you know any kind of screw ups or anything that's inconsistent with um, the timing or anything like that to actually get this in together but at this point, this is how you were, you're able to set up a multicam sequence, get all your footage synced up, and make sure everything's working. If you have any trouble, leave a comment, and I will help calibrate the best that I can. So let's wrap up this section, and yeah, next we'll go through actually editing the podcast itself.